Welcome everyone to a new update and today we'll be covering everything you need to know about the current price action of Bitcoin as we are finally seeing a little bit of volatility but in this update we'll also dive into the importance of the events of coming days and why I stay on being long on Bitcoin. Before we're going to continue make sure to subscribe to this YouTube channel and like this YouTube update if you enjoy the content and if you also like what we do we also have a trade letter with the latest altcoin setups market information and market analysis you can try it for free for one week and the link can be found in the description beneath the same goes for our premium membership which covers my personal trades trade ids and way more this can also be tested for one week for free and you can find that in the description beneath as well in today's video, we'll be covering the big events of the coming days. And why do we do that? Well, the markets are not purely moving on crypto related events anymore, except for Chainlink and Atom, for instance. It's all getting into the macroeconomic playing field. And that's something we should all understand a bit more when we want to invest or trade in the markets. What are those events? Well, the most important part of those events lies in the last part of this week. And I mean, uh, Thursday and Friday with that in on Thursday we've got the consumer confidence in Europe coming in and on Thursday we also have GDP numbers coming out in the US which is probably a deal breaker as then we'll be going into a confirmed recession plus these numbers will probably be worse than expected resulting into a massive move on the markets the jobless claims is also an ongoing subject to watch but less important right now than GDP on Thursday. Friday, we've got another important breaker to watch as then we've got PCE and core PCE inflation numbers coming in from the US. These are important as they are front running CPA data and is one of the key basements where the Fed bases their policy from. So definitely an eye opener to watch. Especially if you want to start investing into the market uh, markets, it's very reasonable to understand macroeconomic dynamics as those are the sole basis of your investments and decisions. Let's get to the part why these are important to keep an eye on the markets. Right now, a crisis is expanding, which means that households and literally everyone is focused on the current energy crisis. Through that, the focus starts to skew heavily towards that topic and people understand that they are into trouble with their energy contracts but also inflation is killing their entire financial situation. So why am I saying this? Well, the entire topic of inflation has been happening since the gold standard got removed in 1971. I don't want to go that far into this topic as it's quite broad, but the topic about inflation is a broad one. The topic about the energy crisis is a very current one and shows the importance of having an understanding of economic behavior when you're living. Every decision you make is a financial decision and choice. If you want to save money instead of investing into an asset, that's also a financial decision. If we go back towards the topic of the energy crisis, we can also conclude that real estate and all markets go in cycles. Therefore, last year the markets of real estate have been booming heavily. And in Amsterdam, prices went up by 11.5% in one year, while well, nationally the prices went up by 15.6%. Yes, you were better off by buying during that period as yields were quite low. But what if this economic turmoil is going to continue? Should you be buying a property right now? Yields are going through the roof and have accelerated from 2% towards 4.5% in a matter of time. No doubt, markets are going to turn for real estate. Now, Going back towards the crypto markets, we have a summary. The Fed has started a policy of hiking interest rates and at the latest event, 75 pips were announced and additionally a path towards Q4 of more hikes to come as they'll be looking into a federal fund rate of 4.4%. Next to that, a recession is confirmed and commodity prices are dropping quite substantially while unemployment rates are starting to run upwards too and other currencies are starting to take measures against a strong dollar. Conclusion. The current policy of the Fed and the strength of the dollar is coming to an end and yields are most likely going to drop soon or correct at least. What does that tell you for the upcoming days? Well, if the GDP rate is going to be bad overall, 
we most likely are going to see a sharp fall on the dollar within a maximum of like one to two weeks from here resulting into yields dropping down and resulting into markets discussing a pivot to come from Powell. What does that mean for your portfolio? And that is the ultimate question, of course. That's why we're making this video. That does mean that for your portfolio, that we're going to have a potential outcome of Bitcoin and crypto and potentially indices to shoot up as a dropping yield return and dropping strength of dollar means that investors will rotate their positions towards other assets. If you add to that the pivots of potentially power to happen, that would conclude that risk on has some relief. What can we see from the charts? Well, that's why we're going to dive into them to summarize what we have been discussing. So let's go towards the charts. So when we're discussing the, the previous topics about macroeconomics, we're looking at a case where Bitcoin and dollar have been inversely correlated. And I think it's not ultra magic that I'm saying this, but um, it is what we have been seeing. And we are seeing that the dollar is getting into a territory of potential resistance and it's getting with the indicators towards the level that it's getting overbought. And therefore it might be from a financial situation. And then I just remove all the macroeconomics. It has or it implies a ton of more risk to the downside than to the upside. The upside is getting quite limited knowing that based from macroeconomics, the fundamental part is shifting, which means that the Fed is getting towards the end of the policy. We're getting bad economic data. Currencies are stepping in or governments are stepping in to fight a strong US dollar. So for everyone, the upside on the dollar is getting quite limited and the downside has some serious trouble as in it can impact a lot of portfolios or a ton of portfolios, which means that rotation of investments makes sense. So when we're discussing the previous uh, topics and the coming ones getting there, um, we are discussing a potential outcome of the GDP and PCE to be worse than expected, which means GDP is very negative. PCE is a lower number than what we have been implying, because if this is going to be lower um, than the number that is expected, it means that the Fed policy makes sense. So the hikes might not continue, therefore the dollar to drop down. So that's what we're looking at in the case of the scenario that I've been saying here. Um, and we probably are going to get it e even though in one or two months from now. But then I'm assuming that the dollar is going to have a sharp correction all the way towards 108 points. The last correction we had with the dollar was at 11th of July towards the mid of August, which if we go back towards the Bitcoin charts, and use the daily can time frame which was from here uh, here we started in which we had the actual run towards mid-august so you can see that the importance of the dollar starting to turn around is going to have a big impact on the bitcoin price action um, if you want to know more about the technicals of bitcoin we have been discussing that on on a different video so with this case and with the strength of the US the dollar, it's going to get into a top or it's going to get into the end game here. And this is the scenario that I'm looking at, especially with the coming events. Now, if we want to combine the yields, we can also conclude that the yields are getting into a territory of potential resistance. And those have been falling down from June all the way to July and have been going sideways. If the yields are also going to fall, it's an implication that the, uh, the investors are expecting the Fed to not keep up the actual policy and as a result most likely has to pivot because if you look at the two-year yield it is a combination of the yields that they are going to get on the government bonds for the next two years so if the federal uh, if the Fed is going to announce hate rate hikes in a federal funds rate to be 4.4 percent at the end of the year next year 4.6 and after that I don't know even probably like 3.8 then the average of that basket is getting towards 4.2. Um, so that's why we are topping out at this level because it is what is being expected by the Fed and the markets are actually not assuming that it's going to be heavier than that. So based on that fact, we probably are going to have a correction coming up if economic numbers are going to be worse because then if you look at the charts, you can see it in the yields, people or investors are expecting uh, the yields to drop down and therefore expect the Fed to pivot. And in that case, we are looking at the weekly time frame for Bitcoin. We can start seeing some serious momentum 
although the mass is still expecting us to drop down. And I said something about real estate and something about energy. People should get a bigger concern about what financial decisions mean to your actual life. And therefore, it doesn't make sense to just be a sheep or just be following the majority in which the majority is saying, hey, I should be buying a house. Maybe it does not make sense to do that at this point. And maybe therefore it does not make sense to actually start looking for longs on the dollar or to swap towards the US dollar, which is the same as swapping your euros towards Bitcoin during this period. All right. So it might make more sense to actually swap your US dollars towards Bitcoin because a period of crypto to do well is most likely going to approach in the coming quarter. So that's what I wanted to discuss today. Let's head towards the conclusion. Thank you for watching to this update. If you enjoy this type of content, make sure to comment beneath so we know what you want to see. Also make sure to hit that like button, subscribe to this YouTube channel, and don't forget to check out our premium membership and trade ladder where you can improve as a trader and investor even more. Tomorrow I'll be back with a live stream at 7 p.m. When we are discussing this topic today, we're also going to dive into TA, which we have been discussing on Tuesday. On 7 p.m. we are going live so make sure to be there and we got some cool announcements coming up next week as well so be there during the live streams have a wonderful day ciao